Hello everybody, how are you guys doing? Hope everybody is doing amazingly well. Welcome back to another lesson of English with Ashish. And guys, today in this lesson, we are going to master all the 12 phrases in the English language. Yes, you heard me right. We are going to learn all of them. We're going to learn what a phrase is, how many types of phrases we have in English, which is 12. What are these phrases? How to use them? How to identify them? Everything about them. So the lesson is going to be really, really informative. Make sure you watch it until the end. It's going to step up your English game. I'm excited. I know you guys are too. Let's start with understanding what exactly a phrase is. Guys, a phrase in English is a group of words. It is a group of words, which means more than one word, right? Which does not have a subject verb combination focus. It does not have a subject verb combination, which means it cannot have both the subject and the verb. It can have the subject, but won't have the verb, can have the verb, won't have the subject. It cannot have both the subject and the verb, right? And it's just a part of a sentence. It's a part of a clause, right? So the main features of a phrase is number one, it's a group of words more than one. Number two, it does not have a subject to a combination. It cannot have that the moment it has both the subject and the verb, it becomes a clause. It does not remain a phrase. It becomes a clause, right? So it does not have a subject verb combination. Number three, it does not give a complete meaning. It does not give a complete meaning. It's not a clause. It's not a sentence, right? So it will not give a complete meaning. Now, how many types of phrases we have in the English language? We have 12 types of phrases. Yes, noun phrase, verb phrase, adjective phrase, adverb phrase, prepositional phrase, gerund phrase, infinitive phrase, a positive phrase, present participle phrase, participle phrase is three types of participle phrases, present participle phrase, past participle phrase, perfect participle phrase and absolute phrase. We're going to master all these phrases one by one. So make sure you have a cup of tea, coffee or whatever you like because it's going to take some time. But it's going to be fun, right? All right, let's start with the very first one, a noun phrase. There is a noun phrase is a group of words, a phrase that functions as a noun. It is more than a word, right, which functions as a noun. So a phrase that functions as a noun in a sentence is called a noun phrase. See, if I talk about a regular noun phrase, a regular noun phrase is formed using a noun and a word or words that modify it, which is the modifier, modifier, right? So this is how we form a regular noun phrase. A noun, a regular noun, like a book, a boy, girl, school, dancer, teacher, and an adjective, right? It can be a determiner or an adjective, right? So this is how we form a regular noun phrase. But we have different types of noun phrases which we'll talk about, all right? Let me show you some examples of some common noun phrases, all right? Regular noun phrases. Example number one. Your father just called me. Your father just called me. Who called me? Your father. This is a noun phrase working as the subject of the sentence. So here, father is a regular noun and your is a determiner, right? Which is giving information about the noun father. Together, it becomes a noun phrase, right? Your father. Your father, two words working as a noun, working as the subject of the sentence. You are the love of my life. You are what? You are the love of my life. So here, I am giving you a name, which is the love of my life. So the regular noun here is love, and we have some modifiers. Pre-modifier, which is the. Post-modifier, which is a prepositional phrase of my life. The love of my life. You are what? The love of my life. I can replace this noun phrase with a, with a regular noun. You are Rahul. You are a teacher, right? John is my best friend. John is my best friend. Again, a noun phrase. A name, which is my best friend. Where friend is a regular noun. And we have two modifiers, which is my, my friend and best friend, right? Fourth, the rules of this company work for some people. The rules of this company, what work for some people? The rules of this company work for, for whom? Some people. So we have two noun phrases in this example. Number one, the rules of this company, which is working as the subject of this sentence. What work for some people? The rules of this company. So the main noun, the regular noun is rules. 
the rules we're talking about particular rule particular rules of this company rules related to this company right so together it's a noun phrase the rules of this company we have a pre modifier in the form of the right definite article we have a post modifier in the form of a preposition phrase which is of this company the rules of this company work for for whom for some people which is another noun phrase people is a regular noun some is a pre modifier determiner and this is working as the object of the preposition for right last example we consider you a good friend we consider you what consider you what i can consider you somebody right i consider you a good friend so again a good friend is a noun phrase where your friend is a regular noun a and good are pre modifier right so we consider you a good friend so what can a noun phrase function as right as a noun it can function as the subject of the sentence in the first example it's doing that it can function as a uh, the subject complement which is which it's doing in the second and the third example subject complement right here as well it's also working as a subject complement it can also work as a direct object which i haven't given you an example of which i will right the rules of the company subject work for some people object of the preposition object of the preposition for preposition for for some people we consider you a good friend here this noun phrase is working as the object complement object complement but it can also function as the object of a verb for example let me give you an example um uh, i love your house i love your house so here your house is a noun phrase which is working as the object of the verb love love what your house right house noun your pre modifier determiner right so this is what a noun phrase is it can function as the subject or uh, object object of a verb subject complement object complement right as you can see it can function as the subject object of a verb object of a preposition subject complement object complement all right now how to form a noun phrase very simple there are three ways to do that number one pre modifier plus a noun so you have to have a word before the noun and together it forms a noun phrase so a noun plus a pre modifier first comes the pre modifier then the noun pre modifier a word that comes before a noun and modifies it right the other is noun plus the post modifier first comes the noun then a word or a group of words that uh, modifies the noun all right the third is a pre modifier right then the noun then the post modifiers right let me give you some examples and make you understand so this is case number 1 pre modifier plus a noun so what do we have in a pre modifier we have two things in pre modifiers right first thing is determiners now determiners are words that determine the noun right and uh, in determiners we have articles right possessive adjectives my your his her right articles we have two types of articles a and indefinite the are definite right demonstrative adjectives this that these those qualifiers some any a few the few many right and numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 first second third both ordinal and cardinal and the second thing that can come as uh, that can come in pre modifiers is adjectives right which is good bad smart tall uh, beautiful dirty and many more right so this is how we can form a noun phrase let's take a noun a regular noun and form noun phrases using all these possibilities so uh, let's use the word house right uh, first of all article plus a noun a house we need a house we need what a house noun phrase using an article pre modifier and the noun which is house right a house second possessive adjective uh i love i love your house i love your house again your possessive adjective then the noun noun phrase third demonstrative adjective i love that house i love this house i love that house right again demonstrative adjective plus the noun quantifier i want some houses some houses because some is a uh, determiner that needs a plural noun right so some houses numbers i 
want one house i want a uh, one house or this is my first house my first house right i can also use just give me a second i can also use an adjective after a determiner for example uh, we need we need a good house we need a good house we need a beautiful house we need a uh a cheap house something like that right so this is the very first way to form a noun phrase first a pre modifier or a noun right pre modifier sorry first a determiner and then the noun right the second way is a uh, determiner uh then the adjective then the noun right second way which includes both pre modifier noun post modifier and noun post modifier right so in post modifiers we have prepositional phrases we have participle phrases we have infinitive phrases and we have adjective clauses right so using all these things after a noun we can form a noun phrase <laughs> let me show you some examples people of my country are smart who are smart people of my country right working as a subject so people is the noun right and then you have a prepositional phrase of my country starting with the preposition of right this is modifying the noun people people which people people of my country right look at the man standing next to your house look at look at whom the man standing next to your house so here man is a regular noun right this is the noun right da is a pre modified definite article standing next to you this is a present participle phrase modifying the noun man look at the man which man standing next to you so i'm talking about the man that is standing next to you look at the man standing next to you so the man standing next to your house sorry next to your house is our noun a uh, phrase working as the object of the preposition at do you have a paper to clean the mess do you have have what a paper to clean the mess so paper is a regular noun right i is a pre modifier to clean the mess is an infinitive phrase starting with the infinitive to clean right a uh, infinitive phrase giving information about the noun paper which paper of what sort a uh, paper to clean the mess do you have a paper to clean the mess paper that can be used to clean the mess right so we have a pre modifier noun post modifier in the form of an infinitive phrase next we are talking about the movie that we watched last week we are talking about the preposition is missing we are talking about about what the movie that we watched last week so movie is your uh, regular noun the is a pre modifier that we watched last week is an adjective phrase that is coming after the noun movie and giving information about it movie which movie that we watched last week right so this is what a noun phrase is right this is how you can form a noun phrase three ways i already explained right in the first example we have a noun plus a modifier right post modifier in the second third and fourth we have pre modifier then the noun then the post modifier all right but it's also important to know that we have different types of noun phrases regular noun phrases regular noun phrases are noun phrases that are formed using a regular noun as i told you car girl boy dancer teacher right for example i need a car i need what a car a pre modifier car a regular noun right i love your family i love what your family i love your house family regular noun house regular noun these are regular noun phrases the second is a gerund phrase which we'll talk about in in detail going forward Uh, i love playing with kids i love what you always love something or somebody what do i love here i love playing with kids which is a gerund phrase starting with an ing form of a verb working as a noun right this is what a gerund phrase does works as a noun i love what playing with kids so it's a gerund phrase that's working as a noun since it's working as a noun and it's a phrase we'll call it a noun phrase right infinitive phrase it can also function as a noun she needs to work harder she needs what we always need something what does she need here she needs to work harder so to work harder is an infinitive phrase starting with the infinitive to plus work right? right uh and working as the object of the verb needs she needs what to work harder right so these are different types of noun phrases going forward we'll talk about gerund phrases and infinitive phrases in detail right don't worry about that the second type of a phrase is verb phrase this is the easiest phrase in english i promise you it is it really is 
Now, what is a verb phrase? A verb phrase is a is a combination of an auxiliary verb, also known as an as a helping verb, and a main verb, right? So when you bring these two types of uh, verbs together, the auxiliary verb and the main verb, you basically have a verb phrase. So it's a combination of of an auxiliary verb and the main verb. Let me show you some examples. I am working on something really interesting, or I am working on something interesting. I am working, right? This is a verb phrase. M, auxiliary verb, working, main verb, right? There you have your verb phrase. We have done your task. We have done your task. Your verb phrase have auxiliary verb, helping verb, done, main verb, right? Auxiliary verb. There you have your verb phrase. Next, they have been sleeping since last night. So here we have two helping verbs, have plus been, and one main verb. You're always going to have one main verb. You cannot have two main verbs in a verb phrase, right? But you can have two or more than two helping verbs, right? So we, here we have two helping verbs and one main verb, right? They have been sleeping since last night. They have auxiliary verb, right? Uh, been auxiliary verb, sleeping main verb. They have been sleeping since last night. Together, have been sleeping becomes a noun phrase. <laughs> My bad verb phrase. For the example, I have been told not to come here. I have been told. This is a verb phrase. Have been helping verb, told main verb. Last, you should have been sleeping that time. So you can have three helping verbs as well, three auxiliary verbs, right? You can do that. Should model auxiliary have a, for the tense, right? Referring to the past, been for the continuity, sleeping. This is the action verb. You should have been sleeping that time. This is something you should have been doing that time, right? So this is what a verb phrase is. That's it. There is nothing to it. Nothing else to it, right? An auxiliary verb plus a main verb together, you have a verb phrase and you will not add anything to it. You cannot uh, make an object a part of it. You don't do that, right? It's only an auxiliary verb and a main verb. The next type of a phrase is an adjective phrase. Very simple. An adjective phrase works like an adjective because it's an adjective phrase. It has to function like an adjective and that is what it does. An adjective phrase is a group of words which is a phrase that functions as an adjective. As I told you, this is what it does, right? Works like an adjective and what does an adjective do? Modifies a noun or a pronoun sometimes. This is what an adjective phrase does. A regular adjective phrase meaning so a regular adjective phrase is formed using an adverb and an adjective. So the adverb is going to give information about the adjective, right? And together it's an adjective. This, this, this setup is an adjective phrase and it's going to modify a noun, right? Or a pronoun, but nothing else. <laughs> Let me show you some examples. He owns some really expensive cars. He owns some really expensive cars, really expensive cars. And these are really expensive. Expensive is the adjective, regular adjective, and really is an adverb, giving information about the adjective. Expensive, really uh, expensive, right? So it's intensifying the meaning of the adjective, right? Cars, second example. I met an extremely beautiful girl yesterday. Yes, I did. How can I forget her? I met an extremely beautiful girl so here see in the first and the second example our adjective phrases are sitting just before the noun just before the noun they're modifying right extremely beautiful girl right extremely beautiful girl really expensive cars right i met an extremely beautiful girl beautiful extremely beautiful right adverb plus an adjective which is beautiful anyone smarter than you can do this anyone who is smarter than you? Smarter than you. Anyone, which is a pronoun, indefinite pronoun, smarter than you, which is a phrase headed by an adjective, smarter than you, right? Giving more information. Anyone smarter than you can do it. So anyone smarter than you, smarter than you is an adjective phrase giving information about the pronoun, anyone, right? You are very sweet. So here, very sweet is our adjective phrase, giving information about the subject you. Coming after the linking verb, you are very sweet. Sweet is the adjective and very is an adverb, right? 
She looks unbelievably pretty in a sari. Yes, she does. She does. She looks unbelievably pretty. Uh huh. Have you seen her in a sari? She looks unbelievably pretty. So, looks is a linking verb here. It's not an action verb. All right. So, after a linking verb, we use a subject complement, which can be a noun or an adjective. So, in the last two examples, these are subject complements, right? Uh, an adjective, adjective phrase. She looks, she equals to unbelievably pretty. Pretty adjective, unbelievably adverb. Modifying the adjective pretty, right? Now, again, we have different types of adjective phrases. First is a regular adjective phrase that is formed using a regular adjective like tall, good, bad, smart, right? Uh, the paper was extremely difficult. The paper was how? Extremely difficult. Difficult is a regular adjective. We've used an adverb before it. The paper. It's giving information about the noun phrase paper, right? Second is a prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase functions as an adjective or an adverb. Example, the ending of the movie was amazing. The ending, so the ending of the movie is a noun phrase, right? Ending is the noun. The is a pre-modifier. And of the movie, of the movie is a post-modifier. A preposition phrase starting with the preposition of giving information about the noun ending. Which ending? The ending was amazing. If I just say the ending was amazing, you wouldn't know which ending I'm talking about, which ending I'm referring to. So here... The prepositional phrase of the movie is identifying the noun ending and talking about which ending the speaker is referring to. The ending of the movie was amazing. So here, this prepositional phrase is working as an adjective because it's modifying the noun ending. That is an infinitive phrase. An infinitive phrase can also function as an adjective. One of its function, right? The right man to contact for this task is John. So what is the subject? This is our subject. The right man to contact for this task is John. So the main noun is men. We have two pre-modifiers, die and right. And we have one post-modifier, which is to contact for this task. The right man is John. Right man for, for what? If you, if you leave the infinitive phrase, you won't know which man we're talking about, right? Right man for to contact for this task. To contact for this task is John, right? So it's an infinitive phrase starting with the infinitive to plus contact, right? And working as an adjective, modifying the noun man. Last, a participle phrase. Yes, a present participle phrase or a past participle phrase can also function as an adjective. One example, the man looking at you is a cop. The man looking at you. This is our subject, noun phrase, is a cop, right? Which man? Looking at you, this is our present participle phrase giving information about the man. Which man is a cop? Which man are you talking about, man? The man looking at you. The man who is looking at you. It's a reduced adjective clause. I have a lesson on that. You can check that out on my channel, right? So this is what an adjective phrase is. And these are the type of adjective phrases we have in the English language, all right? The next type of a phrase, a verb phrase. Very easy, my friends. It is a phrase that functions like an adjective. Phrase. Very easy, my friend. It's a phrase that functions like an adverb, as the name goes. Adverb phrase, right? It tells you everything. The name says it all. Adverb. So it's a phrase that has to function as an adverb. So a phrase that acts as an adverb in a sentence is called an adverb phrase or an adverbial phrase, right? Uh, it modifies the action verb in a sentence. It generally modifies an action verb in a sentence. An adverb phrase, an adverb actually can modify a verb, an adjective, and an adverb as well. But an adverb phrase generally, generally modifies a verb. Let me show you some examples. She punched me very hard. Yeah, she did. <laughs> she punched me. How? How she did that? Very hard. So we're talking about the manner of the action. Punched it in what manner? How? How did she punch? Very hard. Very hard is an adverb phrase. And we're using a regular adverb here, which is hard. Hard, very hard. Right? So we have two adverbs here. Very is also an adverb modifying another adverb, which is hard. Right? You performed extremely well in the task. You performed. Performed. How? Again, extremely well. Right? Well is an adverb, you performed well. Extremely is also an adverb which is modifying the adverb well, right? 
you performed how in what manner extremely well max is hiding behind the curtains right a prepositional phrase can also function as an adverb max is hiding max is hiding hiding where ask the question where where is he hiding the answer is behind the curtains which is a prepositional phrase starting with the preposition behind right telling you about the place of the action where is he hiding his eye hiding behind the curtains right he's saying this to make me happy he is saying this why is he saying this why 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 is the action happening why is he saying whatever he's saying why is he saying that to make me happy so here to make me happy is an infinitive phrase that is functioning as an adverb it's functioning like an adverb he is saying this why is he saying this ask this question why is the action happening to make me happy this is the reason of the action right an infinitive phrase functioning as an adverb so an adverb phrase can be a regular adverb phrase right like i run very fast how do i run very fast it can also be a prepositional phrase i'll call you i'll call you when i'll call you when when after the match it can also be a prepositional phrase it can also be an infinitive phrase i work out why do i work out ask the question why to keep myself fit it can also be a participle phrase <laughs> i went there looking for him why did i go there looking for him right talking about the reason of the action all right why did i go there to to find him looking for him right this is talking about the reason of the action so a participle phrase can also function as an adverb phrase so we'll talk about all these phrases going forward do not do not uh, worry about it all right and we have lessons on all these phrases separate lessons so after the video if you want to master one particular phrase in detail you want to have more examples want to know more things about these phrases watch the separate lessons i'll, I'll share the links of all the lessons in the description all right and the website post as well we have website post on all these topics all these phrases so make sure you visit them as well right the next is a gerund phrase gerund phrase a phrase that starts with a gerund which is an ing form of a verb and functions as a noun a phrase that starts with a present participle which is an ing form of a verb and functions as a noun works as a noun is called a gerund phrase right let me show you some examples and make you understand smoke and weed can change your life positively or negatively i'll leave it to you guys but it can what can change your life ask the question what can change your life that is smoking weed so smoking is the gerund here right and weed is the object of the gerund smoking what weed this can change your life smoking weed nobody is smoking here understand this the action is not happening we are talking about an action which is smoking smoking what weed smoking weed can change your life right doing exercises can change your life another example i love talking to riya what do i love i can love a person i can love a thing i can also love an action which is talking to riya nobody is talking to riya i am not talking to riya right now i am talking about what i love which is an action which is talking to riya what do i love talking to riya so talking is a gerund to is a preposition riya is the object of the preposition all right together it becomes a gerund phrase gerund and something about the gerund i don't believe in killing animals yes i don't i just don't i don't believe in in what in killing animals right so i don't believe in what killing animals killing in the gerund animals is the object of the gerund verb killing right so a gerund phrase can function as the subject of a sentence which it's doing in uh, example number 1 right here it's the subject smoking weed what can change your life smoking weed it can also function as the object of a verb which it's doing in the second example right object of the of the verb i love what talking to riya third example it can also function as the object of a preposition right i don't believe in what killing animals object of a preposition right so this is what a gerund phrase is right now you cannot call something a gerund phrase just by looking at it right if it starts with a present participle and ing form of verb you cannot call it a a gerund phrase it it has to function like a noun all these phrases can function differently as well they can function as an uh, as an uh, adjective as well for example uh, smoking weed 
smoking weed i finished i finished my homework right so here smoking weed is not functioning as a noun it's working as an adjective giving information about the subject i i smoking weed they finished my homework so you just cannot call it a gerund phrase just by looking at it you have to look at its function what is it doing in the sentence is it working as a noun or an adjective or an adverb if it's working as a noun call it a gerund phrase if it's working as an adjective or an adverb call it a present participle phrase all right the next phrase prepositional phrase it is very simple my friends a phrase that starts with a preposition is called a prepositional phrase that is it that's how simple it is a prepositional phrase functions as an adjective or as an adverb right but you'll just call it a prepositional phrase if it starts with a preposition now i've seen a lot of students saying sir you are calling it an adjective phrase and you're also calling it as prepositional phrase why are you doing that see if it starts with a preposition just call it a prepositional phrase based on how it starts how it forms we'll call it a prepositional phrase based on how it functions in a sentence we'll call it either an adjective phrase or an adverb phrase so this is very important to understand based on how it looks like we'll call it a prepositional phrase based on how it functions we'll call it either an adjective phrase or an adverb phrase so let me show you some examples all right don't worry easy peasy example number 1 The ending of the movie was disturbing. The ending of the movie was disturbing. So, of the movie is a prepositional phrase. See, why am I calling it a prepositional phrase? Because it's a phrase that is starting with a preposition, which is of, right? Of, then the object of the preposition, the movie, right? This is what you have in a prepositional phrase. Preposition and the object of a preposition. the ending of the movie was disturbing and now what is it doing should i call it an adjective phrase or an adverb phrase i'll call it an adjective phrase because it's giving information about a about a noun which is ending the ending which ending of the movie was disturbing all right the man in the black coat is a doctor which man in the black coat so it's a prepositional phrase starting with the preposition in then the object in what the black coat which is a noun phrase object of the preposition in right the man in the black coat is a doctor which man in the black coat giving information about the man again it's working as an adjective right in the first example it's working as an adjective in the second example it's working in as an as an adjective let's look at the third example you can hide under the table you can hide 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 where ask where can i hide under the table is the answer so under the table is a prepositional phrase starting with a preposition that is why we're calling it a prepositional phrase but it's functioning like an adverb giving information about the verb where under the table so it's functioning as an adverb phrase right adverb fourth she called me before the exam she called me called when did she call before the exam right so again before the exam is a prepositional phrase right but it's functioning like an adverb it's functioning like an adverb so this is what a prepositional phrase is it starts with a preposition followed by a noun or a pronoun or a noun phrase noun clause right the object of the preposition and functions either as an adjective or as an adverb sometimes it functions as a noun as well which is very tricky right i have a lesson on that right check it out the next is an infinitive phrase an infinitive phrase is a group of words a phrase that starts with an infinitive which is to plus base form of a verb and is followed by the object of the infinitive or its modifier so after this setup to plus base form of verb uh, if the this verb is transitive you'll have the object of the infinitive if that is not the case you'll have a modifier or you'll have both the the object and a modifier right and an infinitive functions either as a noun we we took an example right i've shown you an example uh it can also function as an adjective we have taken an example as well and it can also function as an adverb right let me show you some examples example number 1 to go there alone can be dangerous what can be dangerous you ask you get your subject which is to go there alone it's an infinitive phrase starting with the infinitive to plus go go where there how alone right it's an infinitive phrase functioning as the subject right 
working as a noun, functioning as a noun, working as the subject of the sentence. We like to listen to Sadhguru. I love listening to Sadhguru. Yeah. We like, we like what to listen to Sadhguru. So we like what to listen to Sadhguru. To listen to Sadhguru is an infinitive phrase that is functioning as a noun, as the object of the verb like. We like what to listen to Sadhguru. Infinitive preposition, object of the preposition, right? So in, the, in, these, in these examples, uh, the infinitive phrase is working as a noun. Third example, do you need a paper to clean the mess? Do you need a paper to clean the mess? Do you need a paper? Which paper? What kind of paper? To clean the mess. So to clean the mess is an infinitive phrase that is modifying the noun paper. Which paper? What type of a paper? To clean the mess, right? A paper to clean the mess. Here it's working as an adjective. Yes, my friend. Here it's working as an adjective. Last example. Max does yoga to be fit. Max does yoga. Ask the question why? Why does he do that? Why do you do it, Max? Because I want to be fit. He does yoga to be fit. So to be fit is an infinitive phrase. Two plus base form of a verb followed by uh, an, an adjective which is fit. Working as an adverb. Giving the reason why. Why the action happens. Why does he do yoga? Because he wants to be fit. To be fit. Right? So here it's working as an adverb. Right? So as I told you, an infinitive phrase can function as a noun, first example, second example, can function as an adjective, third example, can also function as an adverb, fourth example. This is an infinitive phrase for you guys. The next is a participle phrase and we have three types of participle phrases. Present participle phrase, past participle phrase and the perfect participle phrase. Let's talk about them one by one. Let's start with the very first one, present participle phrase. A present participle phrase starts with a present participle which is an ing form of a verb, a verb ending in ing and modifies a noun, right? Works as an adjective. So it's an, uh, it's a phrase that starts with a word ending in ing, a progressive form of a verb and functions as an adjective, functions as an adjective. But it can also function as an adverb as well. This is very important to note. It can also function as an adverb. I'll give you some examples. Holding a stick, John entered the classroom. So John entered the classroom is your main clause, right? John entered the classroom. How did he do that? No, he has a stick in his hands and he entered the classroom. So holding a stick is a present participle phrase starting with the present participle holding, right? Identifying the noun John, it's referring to the noun John, right? And just, just giving information about it, right? John holding a stick entered the classroom. So you can write it as John uh, was holding a stick in his hands and he entered the classroom, right? Uh, John entered the classroom and he had a stick in his hand, right? Breathing heavily, I got on the bus, right? I got on the bus. I, I, in what state? Breathing heavily. So when I got on the bus, I was breathing heavily. So I, in what state of being, breathing heavily, right? So when a present participle comes uh, in the beginning, you'll, you'll see a comma. Right after it, you'll see a comma. If it was a gerund phrase, there would be no comma, right? That is another distinction, right? Breathing heavily. Who's doing that? I, I, I breathing heavily got on the bus, right? You can use it after the subject as well, after the noun it modifies as well. In that case, you'll have to use two commas, right? I breathing heavily heavily another comma because you have, you have to separate it because this is extra information got on the bus on the bus right it can come at the end of the sentence as well i got on the bus comma breathing heavily right third example feeling cold i switched off the ac i switched off the ac is the main clause right I switched off the AC. I did something. Now, I feeling cold. So the very first thing it's doing is identifying the subject I. I. And it's working as the reason why I switched off the AC. So here it's working as an adverb. Why? The question should be why? Why is it working as an adverb? Because I, I was feeling cold. Because of feeling cold, I switched off the AC. So I did 
what I did, which is switching off the AC because of something which is shown by a present participle phrase, which is feeling cold. Feeling cold, because of feeling cold, I switched off the AC, all right? So it can also function as an adverb. Not having enough money, I decided to stay home and not go shopping. So why did I uh, decide to stay home and not go shopping? Because I did not, I did not have enough money. So not having enough money. So it's a negative present participle phrase, starting with the negative word not. Not having enough money, I decided to stay home and not go shopping. You can also put it this way. Because I did not have enough money, I decided to stay home and not go shopping. Because of not having enough money, I decided to stay home and not go shopping, right? Now, these are the ways to put it, okay? So this is what a present participle phrase is. It is a phrase that starts with an ing form of verb and functions as an adjective. It will always identify a noun, right? In the first example, it's identifying John. In the second, it's identifying I. Third, I. Fourth, I. It will always identify a noun or a pronoun, generally the subject, right? And function as an adjective or an adverb, generally an adjective, but can also function as an adverb as well. The next one, past participle phrase. What is a past participle phrase? <laughs> it's a phrase that starts with a past participle, which is a third form of verb, past participle. And it functions either as an adjective or as an adverb, same thing. Let me show you some examples. The fruits plucked by you were very tasty. The fruits, which fruits plucked by you? So plucked by you is a past participle phrase, starting with the past participle plucked, V3, right? Plucked by you. Which fruits am I talking about? Which fruits were really tasty? Without this phrase, you don't know. The fruits, which fruits? Plugged by you. So here, this past participle phrase is identifying the noun fruits and working as an adjective, right? Giving information about it. Essential information. The man killed in the attack was from China. The man was from China. Which man are you, are you talking about? Which man I am I talking about? Killed in the attack, right? The man who was killed in the attack. Killed in the attack was from China. So killed in the attack is a past participle phrase. Starting with the past participle kill and identifying the man, uh, the, the noun man and giving information about it, working as an adjective. Third example, frustrated with the unfair treatment, Alex left the company. So Alex did something, he left the company. Ask the question, why? Why did he do that? Why did he leave the company? Frustrated with the unfair treatment. So see, it's identifying a noun which is Alex. It was Alex who was frustrated with the unfair treatment. This is the very first thing you have to understand. It's Alex who was frustrated with the unfair treatment. And this is also working as the reason why he did the main action. He left the company. Why? Because of being frustrated with the unfair treatment. You can put it this way. Because he was frustrated with the unfair treatment, Alex left the job, left the company. Because of being frustrated with the unfair treatment, Alex left the company. The, the easiest or the most effective way to say that is using, the most concise way to say that is using past participle phrase, which is frustrated with the unfair treatment. Who is frustrated? Alex, working also as the reason, he left the company, right? This is what a past participle is. The next is a perfect participle phrase. A perfect participle phrase starts with a present participle having right? It starts with the word having followed by a past participle, right? When it's in the active form. And this identifies a noun or a pronoun as all the other types of participle phrases do and function as an adverb because it works as the reason of the main clause, right? It refers to an action which happened prior to the main clause, prior to the action happened in the main clause, right? We'll understand that with, with examples, but before that, understand the structure can be formed in two ways. In the active voice, this is the structure, right? Uh, in the active voice, subject of the perfect participle phrase is the subject of the main clause, right? And the structure is having followed by past participle followed by object or modifier, right? Here, the, the doer of the action, this action is the doer of the main clause, right? In the passive voice, uh, we use been before the past participle. Having been 
then the past participle, then object to modifier. Here, the doer of this action is not the doer of the main clause. We'll understand that with examples. So we'll, we'll look at examples in the active voice first, right? Having completed the work, I went out to play. So the main clause is I went out to play. So let's suppose this is the time. This is the time when I went out to play. This is the time. The perfect participle phrase refers to an action which happened prior to another action. So it happened here. Having completed the work. So I completed the work here, right? And this is going to work as the reason why I did this action, right? I went out to play. Why? Because I had already done something. Having completed the work, who did that? Who completed the work? This was the subject I. See, I went out and I completed the work. This is in the active form, active voice. Having completed the work, who did that? I, I having completed the work, you can also say like this. I having completed the work, went out to play. Or having completed the work, I went out to play, right? So I did something, why? Because I had already completed my work. So it's working as an adverb. It's working as an adverb. Telling you the reason of the main action. Why did I go out to play? Because I had already completed my work. Second example, Tina, having found her dog back, was very happy. So here, let's suppose Tina was happy here, right? She was happy. She was happy because of something that happened here, which is having found her dog back. So she found her dog here. And because of this action happened here, she was happy here, right? Tina, having found her dog back, right was very happy so when it comes after in 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 the middle of the sentence you use two commas to offset it right it can also come at the beginning having found a dog back tina was very happy okay passive voice in the passive voice the subject of the main clause is not going to be the uh, the subject of the perfect participle phrase right the the duo of the action in the perfect participle phrase examples Having been fired from the job, I opened a cafe. So I opened a cafe. This is the action that I performed. Main clause, right? Having been fired from the job, did I fire somebody? No. I was fired. I received this action. I didn't do this action, all right? So having been fired from the job, right? This is in the passive form. Having followed by been, followed by past participle, followed by other things, right? Having been fired from the job, I opened a cafe. So I opened a cafe because I opened a cafe here because of something that happened to me here. Because of me receiving an action here. Because of this, I did something here. So I opened a cafe here because of something that, ha that had happened to me here. Having been fired from the job. You can put it this way. Because of being fired from the job or because of having been fired from the job, I opened a cafe or because I had been fired from the job, I opened a cafe. Simply put, okay? Second example, having been accused of the thievery, Max left the job. So Max did something, left the job. Ask why? Why did you do that, Max? Poor Max, why did you do it? Having been accused of the theory, this is why he did that. Having been accused of the theory, because he had been accused of the theory, he left the job, right? So here again, it's in the passive voice. He didn't accuse anybody of the theory. He was accused. Max received this action. He didn't do this action. Accusing. No, he was accused. All right. It's in the passive voice. So this is what a perfect participle phrase is. Looks different functions differently as well all right the next one and a positive phrase oh my god i'm so tired my throat so sore all right guys i am hydrated now i'm sore as well let's get this one as well a positive phrase and this one is very very easy my guys and a positive phrase is a noun phrase and we already know what a noun phrase is it is a noun phrase all right and a positive phrase is a noun phrase that sits next to a noun or a pronoun, generally a noun, and uh, give it a name, right? Give it a name, describe it, identify it with a new name. This piece of information, uh, this piece of information, a positive phrase, can be essential or non-essential to the meaning of the sentence. It can be essential or non-essential. If it's essential, 
We're not going to use any commas. If it's non-essential, extra, we're going to use commas. All right. Let's take some examples and understand this. Example number one. The Taj Mahal, my favorite place to visit is in Agra. So the core sentence is the Taj Mahal is in Agra. See, the Taj Mahal is a proper name. It does not need any introduction, any identification. But still, I'm giving, giving it a name, which is my favorite place to visit. It's a noun place, right? Coming next to the noun, the Taj Mahal. Just, just renaming it with other, another name, right? But it's not an essential piece of information, right? It's not identifying Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is already identified. It's a proper noun. So it is non-essential. And what do we do with non-essential information? We offset them using commas, right? Mangesh Kumar Bhardwaj, a popular blogger, is my best friend. So the core sentence is Mangesh Kumar Bhardwaj is my best friend, all right? I am giving Mangesh Kumar Bhardwaj a name which is a popular blogger, which is a noun phrase. A popular blogger, right? Which is renaming the subject Mangesh Kumar Bhardwaj. But it's not doing anything to it. Because Mangesh Kumar Bhardwaj is a specific name of an individual, of a person, right? So since it's non-essential extra, we have used commas before and after it to offset it, to separate it from the rest of the sentence, right? But if it's an essential piece of information, then you're not going to use commas, right? For example, my friend is working on a project. Now, would you ever know which, which friend I'm talking about, which friend I'm referring to? No, you would never know because I might have thousands of friends. Which friend am I talking about? Which friend am I referring to? You would never know. So it's essential to name the person. I mean, without it, the sentence is grammatically fine, right? It does not need the name, but with name, it makes it better, right? My friend, who is Mangesh. So Mangesh is an apostrophe, not an apostrophe phrase, just an apostrophe. My friend Mangesh is working on a project. So it's telling me who my friend is. My friend who's is, whose name is Mangesh, right? So here Mangesh is essential apostrophe. A noun which is sitting next to another noun, noun phrase, and renaming it, but with an essential piece of information. This is what an positive phrase is. Right? If you need more examples, watch my video on a positive phrase or check out my website post. Links in the description. The next one, the last one, absolute phrase. This is a little tricky, but uh, it can make your writing look really, really good. So what's an absolute phrase? An absolute phrase starts with a noun or a pronoun, generally a noun, which is called the subject of the absolute phrase and followed by an adjective phrase. So it has two things, a noun, the subject of the absolute phrase and an adjective. And this adjective, now this is very important to note guys, note this. The adjective can be in different forms. It can be a regular adjective, right? Regular adjective, good, bad, smart. It can be a present participle working as an adjective. It can be a past participle working as an adjective or it can also be a prepositional phrase working as an adjective. Now, what does it do? What is the job of an absolute phrase? See. It does two things. It either just gives information about the scene, makes it more uh, informative, gives more information about it, makes it more beautiful, or it works as the reason of the being clause, right? Let's look at some examples. So these are examples where absolute phrases are working as the reason of the main clause. Okay, example number one. Her mother being sick, Avni decided not to go to office. So the main sentence is Avni decided not to go office. Ask why her mother being sick. This is the reason why she decided not to go to office. Her mother, which is a noun phrase subject being sick is a present participle phrase. Being is a present participle, giving information about the noun mother, her mother being sick, being sick. Avni decided not to go to this, uh, go to office, right? Because of her mother being sick or because her mother was sick, she decided not to go to office. And if you use a main verb, it will become a complete sentence. Her mother was sick. If I say her mother was sick, it's, it's, it's a complete sentence now, right? So we don't do that to absolute phrases. Second, her sister coming back from London after a long time, he started planning for a surprise party for her. So the main, the core sentence is, he started planning for a surprise party for her. Right. But why? Why? 
Why planning? Why started planning? Why? His sister coming back from London after a long time. This is the reason why he started planning for a surprise party for her. So in this phrase, we have a noun, noun phrase, his sister, followed by a present participle phrase, which is coming back from London after a long time. His sister, which sister, coming back from London after a long time, right? Because of this being the case, he started planning for a surprise party for her. Second type, here the absolute phrase just gives information, provides more detail about the scene. Hmm. Look at the examples. The girl was sitting in the corner of her room. The girl was sitting in a corner of her room, tears rolling down her cheeks. So she was sitting in the corner of her room, in a particular corner of her room. And what is happening? Tears rolling down her cheeks, right? This is the scene, right? This is not doing anything grammatically. This is just giving more information, making the scene more uh, detailed, right? Uh, more beautiful. So she was sitting in the corner of her room and tears rolling down her cheeks. Tears, noun rolling down her cheek, present participle phrase referring to the noun tears, right? Your father was uh, walking down the streets, a gun in his hands. So the main uh, sentence is, your father was walking down the streets and there was a gun in his hands, a gun, noun phrase, in his hands, right? So here it's just giving information. He was walking down the streets and there was a gun in his hands, right? So this is what an absolute phrase is. So guys, now we know what a phrase is, how many types of phrases we have, all those 12 types. We know what they are, how, how, how they look like, how to use them, what they do in a sentence. Now you know everything about phrases. Are you feeling confident now? You should be feeling very confident now. <laughs> I'm glad I did that. So if you watched the video till, till here, thank you. Amazing. Congratulations. You mastered all these topics. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, right? Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do that because we have amazing lessons coming every week. So subscribe to the channel, press that notification button as well so that every single time my video comes out, you get notified and you can watch it right away. And if you have a question to ask, make sure you ask that in the comment section below. And, 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 nothing else. I'll see you guys soon. So then keep learning. Have fun. I'm out.